Hello, my little pea shoots. It's Carla, and I'm here again in my kitchen today for a full spring fling, flang flung version of a recipe. This is fresh peas and snap beans with a breadcrumb dressing. It is the full green things are coming out of the ground. Now is the time to celebrate. It's also a mashup of that weird American thing of a three bean salad with the fabulous Italian thing of a chopped salad. And actually what it is, is an answer to all of you who have been saying I'm doing too much vegetarian content on the channel. This salad has meat in it. And if that doesn't make you happy, perhaps my ingenious trick for stringing beans will. You have to watch to find out. I have in front of me three different kinds of fresh peas and beans, right? These are all in the snap bean category. These are English peas. I've got some haricot vert, green beans, AKA wax beans and sugar snap peas. Absolutely go ahead, use snow peas instead. You can use Romano beans that have a nice snap to them. You can use the purple beans over here. This is my handy dandy trick for shelling peas that might have a string. With a regular vegetable peeler and starting at the pointed end, I'm just kind of hooking the blade underneath and then as though I was trying to get a kind of thick slice pushing down and then that's just gonna unzip. The front door is open and then you can just brush these out. So one pound of English peas is gonna yield about a cup of peas, which is a little bit like watching five bunches of spinach turn into um, one spoonful. But if you are ever looking at a recipe and trying to do that calculation, because it's calling for it in cups, you need a pound of peas for a cup of peas. <laughs> Did we talked about this before, didn't no. we? The princess and the pea? No, we haven't talked about it. Oh my God. I want to. Princess and the pea, what my idea of what the fairy tale was about was the dude wanted to marry the princess, except there was a lump in the mattress and she kept feeling the pea. And that was how they could prove that she was a princess because only the finest princess would be able to feel a pea under a mattress. The thing is in my book, like it doesn't matter if you're a princess or not, if you can feel the pea, you have a problem. Who could rest with a pea in the mattress? You know, like who, who put it here? It's like eating popcorn in bed a little bit. Would you say that you are the princess? Oh yeah, full pea detection. Every day of my life, everywhere that I am, I'm detecting peas. Tiny grain of gravel in my shoe. I've got to stop. The temperature of the water for the shower has to be really super dialed in. I, I can't brush my teeth with cold water because it hurts my teeth and that hurts my feelings. Oh. Yeah, being a princess is really, it gets in the way, it slows me down constantly. Just like that, oh, peas are done. You guys know about the bunnies that are in the trash can. It's just like 17 tiny bunnies down there. I want to give them the scraps. <laughs> Here you go, bunnies. Cutting in half. You could go straight across. If you're a princess, you go that way, because it's fancy. Moving on to my green beans and wax beans. These are all in the family of snap beans. Oh, this is my other trick. Instead of lining these up and cutting them, I just go across with the Joyce Chen's. Also, this is directed directly at my father, Frank. Stop trimming the tail. This is lovely and adorable and it shows the beautiful shape of the bean. Okay, bunnies, more treats. Bing. Okay, shh. As if life couldn't get any easier, you don't even have to cut these. They just stay like in their beautiful shape. This salad does not have croutons in it and it does not have breadcrumbs on it. It has a salad dressing with breadcrumbs in it. I have a few pieces of toast that I toasted pretty dry. Day old bread is obviously really great for this. If you wanted to use panko, you can do that too. Just toast it in a pan or in the oven and you can blitz these in a food processor, but I'm going to use my mortar and pestle because it's fun and it's a fun way for this princess <laughs> to get breadcrumbs in her shirt. What I'm thinking about as I do this is I'm thinking about my Dyson. I'm thinking about how fun it's gonna be to vacuum the breadcrumbs off the floor when we're done shooting. I'm at a boil over here. Even though it's not that much beans, it's a good idea to have a very large amount of boiling water. That way when you add your vegetables, you're not going to like completely lose 
the temperature of the water and then for it to take a really long time to come back up. Also important, lot of salt. This will season them for the time that they are in there and it also helps with the green color. So you have to salt as you would for pasta. Everybody's gonna cook together just until it's crisp, tender. I do this even when I'm doing like a crudite or a raw veg platter. It kind of brings out the sweetness. It makes them more delicious. I think the texture is nicer. It's a little step, but it's worth it. Two minutes went really fast. I'm gonna transfer this right into a nice bath. In this case, the ice bath is going to lock in the color because, you know, we want that in our beautiful meat salad. And it's also gonna stop the cooking. Just swish them around a little bit more. While we're swishing our beans, um, shout out to all my other princesses out there. And if you do identify as a princess, you can just drop a crown in the comments. I fully understand your burden and I know what it's like. We walk amongst you with tiny little breadcrumbs in our pants. I'm draining these on a rim baking sheet lined with a clean kitchen towel. We want these to be like cool, crisp, and dry so that they don't water out or dilute the vinaigrette. So now I'm gonna cut the things that would be more common to find in a chopped salad. This is a pecorino that is uh, young, but a little bit aged. So it's just that perfect kind of texture. That'll be really nice to bite into. You could use something like ricotta salada if you wanted to. You could also use something like provolone if that is your jam. Not being too perfect, but kind of cutting into quarter inch pieces. And then basically the same thing with this salami. This is aged, um, it's not a spicy one. It has a little bit of a rind around it. So I'm just gonna score in a couple places going around, cut the little drier end off. And then you can just find those score marks and just peel that casing off. I'll kind of do the same thing and just cut this into planks. We love a little sharp and salty. There's a lot of good textures in the salad. And salads are just fun. And like meat in salad is like so fun. Now I've got some olives. I encourage you to buy olives that still have the pit in them. And the reason for that is that usually the texture of the flesh is gonna be nicer, firmer, less flabby. These are Castle Vetranos. You could use a Serignola. Use a young olive, I think. Like something that is brined in vinegar, not oil cured. It's just a little too heavy, salty for me. And then to pit them, Similar to how you would smash garlic, just use the flat side of the blade. It's gonna separate from the pit really easily. And then I'll go back through and tear the flesh off. And then we get like craggy, again, just like fun pieces of olive. And it's time to make the vinaigrette. This is a very easy, memorizable vinaigrette. It's gonna be equal parts champagne vin and white distilled vinegar. White distilled vinegar, overlooked, fantastic for cooking, not just for pickles and not just for cleaning. Two and two, going in. Certainly mix and match, like a red wine vinegar would be fantastic in this. You could do white wine with cider vinegar. Sticking to this ratio will be great for you. And then the amount of oil, like in the olden days, when I went to cooking school, they taught us one part vinegar to three parts fat. This is like basically four to five. So this is almost equal parts vinegar and oil. Pinch of sugar. So it is bright and acidic. A little bit of sweetness is gonna help balance. And honestly, my life changed so much when I started adding sugar to vinaigrettes. I didn't do it because I thought it, I don't know what I thought. I, I didn't think. Cosmo's favorite spoon. It definitely lifted from a restaurant. I'm sorry to that restaurant, but no doubt. Hmm. yeah, it's great. This is it, people. Bring it on home. Pea Palace, fit for a princess. So just tossing for distribution. I chose oregano for this. I think um, an herb like basil obviously would be really nice. You could use parsley, you could use a mix of maybe parsley and mint even. Oregano just feels like more calling back to that kind of classic Italian chopped salad or an Italian vinaigrette that would have maybe even dried oregano in it. The bunnies get the stems. 
<laughs> it does look like a lot of dressing, but the breadcrumbs will absorb a bunch of it. So it's not going to be swimming in dressing. It's going to be coated in dressing infused breadcrumbs. So the breadcrumbs are going to go in in two additions. I'm holding back about half for putting over the top. This is one of those tricks you've seen me do before. One ingredient, two texture payoffs, one ingredient, two ways. So yeah, even as I'm tossing here, I'm seeing that there's just not too much extra vinaigrette. If you have flaky salt, bust it out. If you don't, kosher's fine. And if you have it, use it. You know what I mean? We're, we're using our nice things. We're not saving them anymore. So this is gonna sit for a few minutes just to let the breadcrumb soften, soak, absorb, crispy gone soggy. What, three minutes, two minutes? I don't care. Final breadcrumb application. 2023, breadcrumbs on salads, not in your pants. <laughs> They're in my pants. <laughs> in yours. Of course, you should eat salad with a fork. Of course, you should eat salad with your fingers. I think switching back and forth, whatever you have to do, because we have a lot of different things and we should have fun while we're eating them, right? Mmm, mmm, mmm. There's a spring fever on a plate. This could be a whole light meal. This could be something on the side with a beautiful roasted meat. This would go great with grilled foods. This would be a great appetizer. It's also a very great thing to bring to a potluck or a picnic because you would dress everything, wait on the breadcrumbs, add them, shaky shaky, go to the thing, blow minds. I'm so distracted by all of the textures and flavors in this salad that it has basically made me forget that I have breadcrumbs in both my bra and my pants. And that is a blessing right there. That's like incredible.